In this video, we're gonna be talking about three ways that you need to be leading your worship team if you wanna lead them well and if you want them to lead your church well. Coming up. Hey, Spencer here from leadingworshipwell.com. This is the place where we talk about how to lead yourself well, lead your church well, and lead worship well. So if you're interested in that, click subscribe down below and let's get into it because today we're talking about worship team leadership. We're talking about how to lead your worship team and specifically we're talking about three areas that you need to lead your worship team in. I know when I first started out, I was only leading my worship team in one of these areas. And that's a good starting place. We got to start somewhere. But if we want to lead our teams well, we need to lead them in all of these areas. So without further ado, let's get into what these three areas are. The first area or way in which you need to lead your worship team is, of course, musically, right? This is what we always do when we first start leading worship teams. We lead our worship teams musically. And what does that look like? Well, we pick the songs out before the night before, hopefully, and we get them to our team and we say, hey team, these are the songs we're going to be leading on Sunday. And then maybe you send out chord sheets and other notes about the arrangement that you're doing. And then you lead your team musically at worship rehearsal. You get together with them sometime during the week or maybe just on Sunday morning before your service starts and you run through the songs, right? You make sure that they know how to play the worship songs because that's kind of why you get together on Sunday mornings with the rest of your church, right? That's like your responsibility. You, There's no doubt that music is your responsibility. And so that's what we do as worship team leaders. I'm pretty sure that's where most of us start, right? Like I can think back to when I was the praise team coordinator back when I was 16 years old. And I remember pretty much only focusing on the musical side of things. So I would schedule worship team volunteers. I'd get them the music that they need. And then we'd get together for re rehearsal and I'd make sure that we had our songs ready for Sunday. But here's the thing. That's a great starting place. And that's where most of us start whenever we start leading a worship team. But that can't be the only place that we lead our worship team. That can't be the only area in which we lead our worship team because you're not a worship team then. You're just a band, right? And we aren't now, I'm using the word worship team or the phrase worship team very specifically because your group of musicians who get together at your church on a Sunday morning and lead worship aren't just a band. You are a worship team. And so to transition from band to worship team, there's two other areas in which we need to lead our team. So let's talk about the next area where you need to lead your worship team team, not your band, but your worship team. The second area in which you need to lead your worship team is relationally. You need to be building relationships with, first of all, with you and your team members, but also the team members together need to be building relationships. And that's something that you facilitate as a leader. And this is where we make the transition from band to team. You see, bands just get together for a musical purpose, right? Like I think of all those old rock bands who absolutely hate each other, but they still tour because they need to make money. They still tour together and they are a band, but they don't even like each other. They're just a, a band of musicians who get together to play and they probably don't even talk to each other outside of that time. That's not what we want to build. I'm not saying all bands are like that, but we don't want to build a band. We want to build a team that serves our church. Just like in any other area of ministry in your church, I hope that the volunteers who are getting together aren't just getting together to just serve and in their role on Sunday, but I hope that they have relationships with each other. That's part of uh, the benefit of serving in the church is that you get to build these relationships. And so we want to facilitate that in our worship teams. We want to create environments that allow us to build relationships. And here is where I know I got it wrong whenever I first started leading a worship team was that I was just focused on that first part, right? The musical part. And whenever we got together for worship rehearsals, I'd say, thanks for showing up, everybody. Let's run through the songs for Sunday. And we run through the songs and maybe pray at the end and then go home. But we're supposed to do more than that. 
So I want you to start expanding your understanding of what it means to lead a worship team to how do I lead my worship team relationally. And when you get together with your worship team, number one, if you have like a regular rehearsal, think about it real quick. Like, do I only run through songs or do I allow time for relationships to be formed? Because you aren't just there to run through songs. You're there to build relationships. So some ways you can do that is just having like a, a super simple way you can do that is just having a check-in time before your uh, worship rehearsal starts. And before you run through your songs, you sit down with your worship team and just talk to them and let it be free flowing. I know you have a lot to get through whenever you get together for a worship team rehearsal, but if you just tell yourself, you know, I'm going to take 10 minutes to just talk with my worship team. Like worship rehearsal starts at six o'clock, but from six to six ten, we're going to make sure that we're set up and make sure that people are there on time. And then we're going to sit down and I'm just going to say, Hey guys, how's it going? Like what's going on? during this week, let me know the most exciting thing that happened to you this week. And you can ask like little questions like that to build relationships. So that's a super simple way, uh, a little bit more, I don't want to say complicated way, but a better way to do that is to plan gatherings outside of your normal worship rehearsals. Think about the last time you got together with all the people from your worship team outside of a worship rehearsal environment, right? Most of the time, it's just on Thursday nights or Saturday mornings or whenever your team gets together to rehearse. That's like the only time you're getting together with your, with your, worship, with your worship team. So what if instead of, maybe even instead of a worship rehearsal, you said, guys, we're, we're going to pick five songs, that we know really well, four songs that we know really well, however many songs you do in your service. And we're going to not have the musical part of worship rehearsal on Thursday night, but we are just going to get together and play some games, or we're just going to get together and have dinner. That would be if you haven't ever done that before, if you haven't been focusing on building relationships with your worship team, I'm willing to wager that that gathering would be 10 times more beneficial for you and your worship team than for them to just run through a couple songs for the coming Sunday. It would do so much to build your worship team. So consider that. Could you sacrifice one worship rehearsal? Just pick a bunch of songs your team already knows so that they're ready for Sunday. Maybe you run through them on Sunday morning real quick, but you know them, and then just use that time to have a gathering that is not music related and you're just hanging out building relationships with each other. The second way that you need to pour into your worship team and lead them is relationally. And finally, the last way, we talked about the musical side of things. We talked about the relational side of things, the team part of worship team. Let's talk about the worship part of worship team. The third way, the third area in which you need to lead your worship team is spiritually. We know that our group of musicians aren't just there to play music. I've already said that. You already knew that. They're there to lead worship, and leading worship is a spiritual act. So if we never lead our team spiritually, it's going to be hard for them to lead others spiritually because, first of all, they aren't uh, reinforcing or they aren't being reinforced in that mindset that this is a spiritual act of leading worship. If you always only focus on the musical side of things, then what you're subtly reinforcing is that we're just here to play music on Sunday mornings. But when you implement a spiritual element into your worship rehearsals, into your worship uh, team gatherings, then it reinforces the idea that we aren't just here to play music. This is a spiritual act that we get to do. Plus, number two, whenever you build your team up spiritually, they are able to better lead your church spiritually. So we want to reinforce that their responsibility is a spiritual one, first and foremost. Music is secondary. And then second, we want to build them up so that they can fulfill that responsibility. So how do you lead your worship team spiritually? Well, I think that the best way to do it are during devotionals, during your worship rehearsals. 
It's taking, literally it can be 10 or 15 minutes out of your worship rehearsal. And instead of running through songs for that time, you just sit down and you take them through a devotional. And you take them through a devotional that is specific to being a worship team member. And you lead them through that. And you raise them up spiritually and you pray for each other. That's the easiest way to do it. And I know that that can be kind of difficult, uh, but I've got some resources for you that include worship team devotionals. And so I want you to check that out in the description below. First of all, I want you to get this. I, I think that the best way to reinforce these values, these areas in which you can lead your worship team is through your worship rehearsal. If you have a solid worship rehearsal structure, then you will be able to lead them in all three of these areas. And that's why I put together the worship rehearsal blueprint. I left a link down in the description below to it. And in this blueprint, I share with you the five essential pieces to a worship rehearsal that allow you to lead your team musically, relationally, and spiritually. If you just follow that blueprint, you will lead your worship team well. And then in the coming days after I send you that worship rehearsal blueprint, I'll send you a bunch of other valuable uh, worship team resources as well, which includes a worship team devotional that you can use at your next worship team rehearsal. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, check it out in the description below. Those were the three areas that you need to be leading your worship team in. And I want to hear from you. Have you been leading your worship team in those three areas? Musically, relationally, spiritually, let me know in the comments below which one of those have you been focused the most on and do you feel like you need to focus on the other ones a little bit more musically, relationally, spiritually. Those are the three areas. Do that. You'll lead your worship team well. Other than that, thanks so much for joining me. Until I see you in the next video, keep leading worship well.